Hi, welcome to Don's Key Tech. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing my complete Raspberry Pi RFID door lock system with a database interface. As you can see here, I have here my Raspberry Pi Zero, my MFRC522 reader, a relay, and a solenoid door lock, several status LED, and a buzzer component, including my external power supply also in here which powers my solenoid door lock i also have several rfid tags in here when i try to scan should validate if this rfid tag is present or not in our database so for example this rfid batch number qttrrss is not present in our database while the other one which is the AABB CC and DD RFID batch number is present in our database. So let's try to scan first this invalid one and what I'm expecting is that when I try to scan in here my red LED should light up and my buzzer should sound and my solenoid door lock should remain shut down or locked. So, let's try this one. As you have seen, the red LED light, lights up and there's the buzzer component that sounded. Let's try again. Okay, which means that this RFID batch number is an invalid and is denied access. However, I have here my second Prep ID badge, which has a batch number of AABBCCNDD, which is, by the way, present in my database. So if I scan this one, then what I am expecting is that the green LED in here should light up and there should be no buzzer, but my solenoid door lock should open up. So let's try this one. As you can see, my green LED lights up and my solenoid door lock unlocks. Let's try again. Okay, so meaning the this RFID badge number is present in our database. Now, let us take a look at the program output in my Raspberry Pi. So this is the program output in my Raspberry Pi and let's try first running the invalid one and let's see what will happen in our terminal program output. Let's try. As you could see, you have, we've seen the message access denied which means that this RFID badge is in valid or denied access so let's try this one this RFID is valid as you can see you were able to open the door lock and there is a message here which represents the information regarding the RFID and the name of the student that should own this RFID batch number. So this program that is running in my Raspberry Pi, which by the way I am accessing through the terminal, this program that I am showing is communicating with another application which I am calling as my REST API application which is running in my laptop. So I'm going to show you this application. So this is the application that is running in my laptop and the job of these two application is to communicate with our MongoDB Atlas database where we store the information regarding our RFID. Also, this is the program that communicates with our Raspberry Pi program and sends back information regarding the RFID batch number. This two application is written 
using Node.js and React.js and is using what we call as the MERN stack or the MongoDB, Express, React, and Node.js technology stack. This REST API application exposes a REST API endpoint which we are using in our program to validate if our REST, if our RF ID batch number is present or not in our database. Also, it creates an application that we can take a look like this one, which is our student's RFID system. And this contains the information regarding our students, including their RFID batch number. So let me try to verify if this RFID batch number is really present in our database. So as you could see, this RFID batch number is really present in our database. So that's why when we try to scan it, the RFID door lock opens. And this RFID batch number is given access. However, if we try to search for the other one, which is the QQ for our SS, you would see that there is no student with that particular details. So that's why if we scan this QQTTRS again, then this particular batch number is denied access. However, if we edit this particular student and reassign this particular RFID batch number to him, so for example, this one, we assign it the RFID batch number of QQ, PTRR, and SS, and then we click edit. You would see that we have successfully edited the information. And if we click back, we now have this RFID batch number assigned to this particular student. So what I'm expecting right now is if we scan this particular RFID batch number, then we should be given access. So let's try it. As you could see, the door lock opens up and my green LED lights up. Let's try again. Okay, so meaning this RFID batch number is now able to access our door lock system. And that's all for the demo regarding this particular project. The details on how to run this application, including the overall design, is available in the description of this video so that you would be able to understand the overall picture on how it really works. I have created the step-by-step -step explanation on how to set up this whole project so that you would be able to apply it in your own project. All of this is available in the companion write-up which you can find out in my web page and the code for all of this is available also in my GitHub rep repository for you to check out. I hope you learned something. Happy exploring!